Hi, my name is Kepsi and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to solve Valley View University end of semester examination on ordinary differential equation. So this will be a very interesting engagement. So be my guest. So the examination is on Sandwich 2022-2023 final examination. And the lecturer is Dr. Robert Akpalo. The examination is divided into two sections, section A and section B. In section A, where there are five questions, students are supposed to answer all the five questions there for 40 marks. So section B, students are supposed to answer only three questions out of a possible five, which cover or which fetches 60 marks. So in this video, we are going to find solution to the section A, and I will indulge you to check out my videos on finding solution to section B. So come along as we find solution to the section A. So the first question, which fetches 8 marks? They say we should solve the first order differential equation divided by dx plus y over x minus sine x equal to 0. So, so this is a, a first order uh, differential equation which is a linear for that matter in the sense that the order is 1 and the x terms here doesn't have the y term attached. That's one we write dy over dx plus y 1 over x is equal to sin x. So since there is no any y component attached to it, then it is a linear first order ordinary differential equation. So anytime we are confronted with a linear first order ordinary differential equation, we need to find the integrating factor. And the integrating factor is nothing but the coefficient of the y component here. And the coefficient of the y component is 1 over x. But just make sure that the coefficient of the differential is always 1. So since it's 1, we don't have problem. So we find the integrating factor u of x. And it is giving us e exponent, the integral of p of x dx where the p of x is equal to 1 over x. So, we can find our integrating factor u of x to be equal to e exponent, the integral of p of x, which is 1 over x dx. So, our u of x will be equal to 1 integrate 1 over x is lin x. So, we have e exponent lin x. So anytime the exponential function meet the lean function, the answer is nothing but the function here. So we can say this is equal to x. Having found the integrating factor, you multiply the integrating factor through the differential equation. So we can say that x, which is the integrating factor, times dy over dx plus x times y over x is equal to x sin x. So we we'll multiply it through. When you multiply through, after you multiply through, that's how we have x dy over dx plus y. Since the x would divide each other, y will be equal to s sin x. So after you multiply the integrating factor through the differential equation, the left hand side of the equation will just be the product differentiation of the dependent variable and the integrating factor. So we can say this is the integrating factor, which is x, and the dependent variable y, their product differentiation will be equal to x sin x. In the sense that when we differentiate this, we'll get this. Since we are using product differentiation, we'll keep x, when we differentiate y, we'll get the y over the x, plus using product rule, we'll keep y and differentiate x, and that will be one. So that is correct. So, now we integrate both sides. So we can say the integral of x, y prime will be equal to the integral of x sine x. So this differential will cancel this integral. We we'll have x, y is equal to the integral of x sine x. Now how do we integrate this? We need to use integration by part integrate this. So let's integrate this by part. That's the integral of x 
sin x dx will let u to be equal to x and the v prime to be equal to sin x so we find the u prime u prime will be equal to one and our v will be the integral of sin x and the integral of sin x is negative cos x so we can say the integral of x sin x please check out my videos on integration by part on youtube will be equal to uv and our u is x times the v relative cos s minus the integral of v u prime so our v is negative cos and the u prime is one so we say one times negative cos s dx so we can say the integral of s sin x ds will be equal to negative x cos x then plus this negative will pull it out that become plus the integral of cos s ds so this will be equal to negative x cos s and the integral of cos s is what is sin x then plus our constant of integration I'm gotten the integral of s sin x to be equal to negative s cos s plus sin s plus c, which we can rewrite as sin x minus s cos x plus c. We can say that our x y from here will be equal to sin x minus s cos s plus c. So we need the dependent variable to stand alone. So we divide both sides by s. Then our y of s, which is the general solution to the differential equation, will be sin x minus s cos s plus c, all that over x. Then this becomes our general solution to the differential equation. I hope you get that. We'll go to the question two. Okay. So the question two, which is also worth eight marks, is that we should solve the differential equation y prime minus 2y equal to e exponent 2t with initial condition giving us y of 0 equal to 2. So this particular question is also on linear first order ordinary differential equations in the sense that there is no y component attached to the t here. So we are going to solve it just as we solved the question 1. We need to find the integrating factor. And the integrating factor u of t in this case is equal to e exponent, the integral of pt dt where the pt is equal to the coefficient of the y term and that will be equal to negative 2. So our u of t, the integrating factor, will be equal to e exponent the integral of negative 2 dt which we can rewrite as e negative 2 the integral dt. So when we integrate that, we we'll get when we integrate dt, uh, dt we we'll we'll just get uh, t. So we we'll get negative 2t. So how we find that we we'll multiply through the differential equation. So we we'll multiply through this differential equation. So we we'll get y prime e s by negative 2t minus e s by negative 2t. So 2 e s by negative 2t y equal to e s by negative 2t times e exponent 2t. So we'll multiply through, I've been saying, I'll immediately we'll multiply through, the left hand side becomes the product differentiation of the integrating factor and the dependent variable. So the integrating factor, which is e s by negative 2t, then times our dependent variable, the product differentiation of that is equal to, we'll use uh, indices here, we'll say negative 2t plus 2t. So, let's check whether it's correct. When we maintain our e s point 2t and differentiate y, we'll get y prime e s point 2t. Then plus, now we maintain y and differentiate e s point 2t. Remember the differentiation of exponential function, we just differentiate the exponent, which will be negative 2. We use it to multiply the function. So, you see that we had it back. So, we can say y e s point negative 2t, the product differentiation of that will be equal to e exponent negative 2t plus 2t that will be zero and e that will be e exponent zero so half y e exponent negative 2t equal to e exponent zero is one 
So what do we do to remove this differential? We integrate both sides. So say the integral of y is prime negative 2t all prime is equal to the integral of 1 dt. So this differential will cancel the integral. We have y e exponent negative 2t equal to when we when we differentiate this, integrate this, we just get t then plus our constant of integration. So now we divide both sides by e exponent 2t. So we have our y to be equal to t plus c all over e exponent negative 2t. So this can be written as t over e exponent negative 2t then plus c over e exponent negative 2t. So our y of t will be equal to, when we send this to the top indices, we'll have t e exponent positive 2t then plus c e exponent positive 2t. Remember some initial conditions are given. That's when s is 0, y is 2. So we can say that in place of the set 2 will be equal to 0 times e exponent 2 times 0 plus c e exponent 2 times 0. So 2 will be equal to, this will be 0, then plus c e exponent 0. And e exponent 0, remember, is 1. 1 times c will be c. So we have 0 plus c. And 2 is equal to c. So our c will be equal to 2. So I haven't gotten the, the value of our constant. We now substitute into the general solution this or this to get a particular solution. So we can say that our y of t will be equal to t e exponent 2t then plus 2 e exponent 2t. This becomes our particular solution to our first order linear ordinary differential equation. So now we'll go to the third question. So the question 3 says that we should show that y of t equal to c e exponent 3t where c is constant is a solution of the ordinary differential equation dy over ds equals to 3y. So the question 3, when you are, anytime you are asked to find whether a particular function is a solution to a differential equation, you always differentiate the function to the order of the differential equation. After that, substitute into the differential equation. If the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side, then we say the function is a solution to the differential equation. If it is not, then we say it is not a solution. So remember our function is y is equal to c e exponent 3t. So we differentiate this function. dy over dt will be equal to 3c e exponent 3t. You know how to differentiate exponential functions. So this is the order. It is to the first order. So now we know how dy over ds. We substitute into the differential equation. So in place of y, we substitute c e exponent 3t. And dy over dt, we substitute this. So we can say 3c e exponent 3t is equal to 3. And our y is c e exponent 3t. So we can say 3c e exponent 3t is equal to 1 multiply this. We will get 3c e exponent 3t. So we realize that this is the same as this. So we can say our left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Hence, y of t equal to c e exponent 3t is a solution So using to a differential equation dy over dt equal to 3y. I hope you get that. This is very, very easy. Now we'll go to the fourth one. So the question first says we should find the integrating factor for the differential equation xy prime plus bracket x plus 2 bracket close y equal to x cube. And this is also of its max. Before we can find the integrating factor of this differential equation, we need to rewrite the differential equation into its standard form. Thus, we must make the coefficient of the differential term or the derivative to be 1. So we divide through the equation by x. So we can say 
x y prime over x plus x plus 2 y all over x is equal to x squared over x. So this will divide that. So have y prime plus x plus 2 over x y is equal to x squared. This will reduce the exponent by 1. So now it's in its standard form. So you must check which form of a first order differential equation is this. So you see that the x term here doesn't have the y component. Then this is also a linear first order ordinary differential equation. So we need to find the integrating factor, which the question demands. So our u of x is giving us e exponent, the integral of p of x ds. I've said it time with that number is that our p of x becomes the coefficient of the y term. And that's x plus 2 all over x. So we can say our integrating factor u of x is equal to e exponent the integral of x plus 2 over x then dx. We can rewrite this as e the integral of dividing the x by a term. So I say x over x plus 2 over x or that dx. So our u of x can be simplified as the integral, uh, e, the integral of what? 1, x divided by x is 1, then plus 2 over x dx, which we can rewrite as the integral of e, the integral of x dx, plus the integral of 2 over x dx. So please, this place is 1. So this is 1 dx. So I'm just integrating 10 by 10. So the integral of this, what else 1 dx, then plus the integral of that. So we can rewrite this as u of s equal to e, the integral of 1 dx, then plus 2, the integral of 1 over x dx, since the 2 there is constant. So our u of s, which is the integrating factor, will be equal to when we integrate this, we just be x, then plus 2, the integral of 1 over s is what? Is lin x. So our integrating factor u of x will be equal to e exponent x, then plus x plus lin x squared using the law of logarithm. So we can say our u of x, this can be rewritten using this is as e exponent x times e exponent lin x squared. So, remember, when the exponential function means the lin function, the answer is just the function there. So, our u of x will be equal to e exponent x times x squared. So, the integrating factor u of x becomes x squared e exponent x. Then this becomes our integrating factor. So, in case we are asked to solve this differential equation, we just multiply the integration factor through the differential equation. And remember, the left-hand side becomes a product differentiation of the integrating factor and the dependent variable. So the question 5 says we should find a complete solution to the differential equation y prime prime plus 2y prime plus y equal to e s for negative t. So here, the issue is supposed to be y prime prime plus 2y prime plus y equal to e s for negative t there. The prime for the 2y there is removed. So please check it out. So the, all the questions we have been solving so far is on first order ordinary differential equation, but this one is on second order. So come along as we solve it. So anytime you are faced with a second order ordinary differential equation, yours is to check. So please, this is question five, the fifth one. So anytime you are faced with a linear a second order ordinary differential equation. Yours is to check whether it is homogeneous or non-homogeneous. And the homogeneity will be checked by what is it is equated to. So you can see that it's not equated to zero. So since it is not equated to zero, then it becomes non-homogeneous. And when we are faced with a non-homogeneous second order ordinary differential equations, we can use three methods in solving it. Method of undetermined coefficient, variation of parameters, and the d operator method. So in this, I'll be using the method of undetermined coefficient
to solve this. So to solve that, yours is to equate this side to zero so that it becomes homogeneous. So we said that the solution to this differential equation, y of t is giving us y of c, that's the solution to the homogeneous side plus y of p, the solution to the non-homogeneous side. So we said that we should let y prime prime plus 2y prime plus y should be equal to 0. Having set it to 0, it becomes homogeneous. So when it is homogeneous, we let y to be equal to e exponent r of t. And we find y prime. y prime will be equal to r e exponent r of t. And y prime prime becomes r squared e exponent r of t. That is differentiating this to this and differentiating that to this. I haven't gotten that we substitute this into our differential equation, the homogeneous one for that matter. So this will be r squared e exponent r of t, that's for y prime prime, then plus 2 r e exponent r of t, then plus e exponent r of t, all that equal to 0. So you can see that e exponent r of t is common to all of them. So r squared plus 2 r plus 1, we factor that out. E exponent r of t becomes 0. On the five both sides by e exponent r of t, you get r squared plus 2r plus 1 equal to 0. Then this becomes a quadratic equation. Then the root of this quadratic equation will determine the form of our homogeneous first order ordinary, uh, second order ordinary differential equation. So we need to solve this. So we have r squared plus r plus r plus 1 equal to 0. What is common here? R is common. We have R plus 1. Then plus 1, R plus 1 equal to 0. So we have R plus 1, R plus 1 equal to 0. So R will be equal to negative 1 twice. Then what happened? We have a repeated root. When there is a repeated root, please check out my videos on non-homogeneous or non-differential equations on YouTube. So when you solve the quadratic term, you have a repeated root. Then our general solution, that is a complementary solution to the homogeneous part, will be equal to a e exponent r of t, then plus bt e exponent r of t. So our y of c then becomes a, our r remember is negative 1, so we have a e exponent negative t, then plus bt e exponent negative t. Then this becomes a solution. To the homogeneous side. Now we find solution to the non-homogeneous side. That's y of p. So we need the solution to the non-homogeneous side. So after that we combine the two, and that is called the principle of superposition. So see, we have a e exponent negative t. Since this is the same as this, that's why I say b t e exponent negative t. So our y of p then becomes c t square e exponent negative t. We let that, we let it to be that. And we need to find that c. So what do we do? We differentiate this, then you equate it back to the differential equation. So we can say our y prime of p will be equal to 2ct e exponent negative t. That's, remember this is product, so we need to use product rule. So I keep the e exponent negative t and differentiate the t square, then plus now keep the t square and differentiate this. When we differentiate this, remember it will be negative 1. Then we use it to multiply. So we have minus c t square e exponent negative t. Then we need to find our second differential. Since our differential is equation is to second order. So we need to differentiate this as well. So we can say y prime prime of p is equal to product rule again. So I'll differentiate the two the, the t, so I'll get 2c e exponent negative t, then I'll differentiate this, I'll get negative 1, so negative 2c t e exponent negative t, that's for all of this, now this, I'll keep, so minus, I'll keep my e exponent negative t and differentiate this, so I'll get 2c t e exponent negative t, then minus minus c t square yes one negative t. So if we polish this well, we can say y prime prime of p 
is equal to 2c here is for the negative t minus 2ct here is for the negative t i'll expand here i'll get negative 2ct here is for the negative t then plus ct square here is for the negative t so i'll group like this our y prime prime of p will be equal to so 2c here is for the negative t this is a a light end to this both are having coefficient of minus 2 2 ct so i'll get negative 4 ct yes for negative t then plus ct square yes for negative t so we haven't gotten our second differential and first differential and the function itself we substitute it into the differential equation and equate it to our non-homogeneous side so what do we do we substitute now so in place of y prime prime i'll substitute this that's 2c here is for a negative t minus 4ct here is for a negative t then plus ct square here is for a negative t then plus 2 then y prime our y prime remember is 2ct here is for a negative t minus ct square here is for a negative t uh, 2ct here is for a negative t then minus 2ct then minus ct square sorry minus ct square yes for negative t then plus my y and the y becomes this that ct square yes for negative t or that equal to yes for negative t so let's expand and group like this so we have 2c yes for negative t minus 4ct Yes, for negative t plus c t square. Yes, for negative t. Then this will give me plus four c t. Yes, for negative t minus two c t square. Yes, for negative t. Then plus my c t square. Yes, for negative t. All that equal to yes, for negative t. So I'll group like this. So I'll have my c 2c yes for negative t here now I have minus 4 c t yes for negative t then plus 4 c t yes for negative t then i'll see the square terms so i have my plus c t square yes for negative t minus 2 c t square yes for negative t then another ct square so plus ct square yes for negative t and all that equal to yes for negative t so this will just be reduced to a very simple term so we have 2c yes for negative t this doesn't have any light term but minus 4ct yes for negative t plus ct yes for negative t that that will be zero then ct square yes for t minus 2ct yes for t Will be negative ct square e exponent t then plus ct square e exponent negative t that will also be zero so what will be left will just be 2c e exponent t this is a very good aspect of the method of undetermined coefficient and that will be equal to e exponent negative t so when we divide both sides by e exponent negative t our 2c will just be one so our c is nothing but half having gotten the value of c our solution to the non-homogeneous that side that's y of p will be equal to this remember we said it's this so we say half the c is half so half t square e exponent negative t so remember we said the solution to our differential equations is y of c plus y of p that's the method of superposition so now we'll add them to form the general solution so you can say the general solution y of t is equal to the solution to the complementary side that's the complementary solution to the homogeneous side a e exponent negative t plus b t e exponent negative t then plus half which is the y of p that's half t square e exponent negative t then this becomes the general solution to our 
second order homo non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation so please we'll end it here for this video try to check out the solution to the section b on youtube also remember to subscribe to my youtube channel share and comment this will help my youtube channel grow more and i can record more mathematical content for you